Hi, so in today's demo, we're here to cover a general walkthrough of the commercial estimating process with Measure Square 8, correct? Yes. Okay, great. So to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick overview of our workflow. So this is the takeoff tab here, and this is where we're going to be spending most of our time in Measure Square 8. So you can see we start off here in the top left, and it's kind of just a, uh, a quick little journey across these different groups. So we start off with our import button here, where we can bring in our PDF, set it to scale, and bring it into our takeoff tab. And then our next step is going to be to use our room drawing buttons to trace out the room shapes. We can use our shape menu here to modify those rooms, uh, breaking them into multiple product regions, putting in elevations. Our estimate and seam module is where we're going to make sure that all of our flooring products that we've put in are laid out correctly and optimized for our waste. And then over here on the right hand side, we have some view and zoom options, as well as kind of your standard uh, cut, copy, paste, and uh, rotate commands here. So that's kind of the overall approach here. And then on the left hand side, we have our product area. And on the top here, we have a master product database. This is where we can have our products that we want to use across every project here loaded in and ready to go. So whether it's a transition or floor prep, kind of our daily driver type items are going to go here. And then below, we have what we call our project items. And this is where we can build out our custom items that are project specific on our finished schedule, such as like a hospitality pattern carpet that we're never going to see again. Uh, we can build that as a one-off project item so that it won't bloat out our uh, database here for later use. So there's some other buttons here below our product and services, such as our tile patterns, our profiles, and our templates. And uh, we'll get to those a little bit later, but that's kind of the lay of the land here on the left-hand side. And then just to cover everything thoroughly as far as how things are laid out, here on the right-hand side, we have these two little arrows, and that's where we can access our property view, which will come into play once we're accessing the details of our rooms and so on. So that's kind of the, the overall layout here of the takeoff tab. Um, did that kind of give you a good reference point for how we're going to make our way through the software? Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay. And just so you know, once we're done with this tab, uh, we basically will round out the discussion by going here to our worksheet tab. We will show our uh, product quantities and all of our usages in an Excel spreadsheet friendly format where we can either print to a PDF or go into an Excel proposal. And then we'll round out today's discussion by going to the file button and we'll finish up by using our print button here to go ahead and assemble a bid packet. So if that all sounds good, um, why don't we go ahead and get started on a small single layer project? Um, so does that sound good? Yep. All right, excellent. So to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the import button here in the top left. And we do recommend using a PDF format. We do support other images, but PDF uh, tends to work out the best. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this little uh, sample file we have here. It's just a quick little uh, one page medical center, but it's enough for us to get the job done. So here on this pop up, you can see we have our one page showing if this was a full set of plans. We would have a list here with each page showing as its own line item. And if we hover over this thumbnail, you see we get a little preview of what we're working with. So that way, if we have a large set of plans, we don't have to select every single page. We can just make sure that the pages we need for our scope of work are checked off here. So we can kind of save ourselves some import time and some files. We're good to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. We'll give my computer a couple seconds to think and now we're brought into our preview area. So this is where we can use our scroll wheel to zoom in, find our scale on our plan here. And since I don't have any dimensions, I'm just gonna go up to the top right here where our plan is selected. We'll click on this little drop down. We'll choose one fourth and left click, and you'll see that this drawing is gonna be resized for us. Now, if we did have dimensions on this plan, the best practice would be to left click to highlight the plan like so. And then we can go up here to the top left and choose our scale button. And when we left click there and hover over our drawing, 
This will give us our crosshairs and we can just left click on either side of a dimension and then our actual length field will pop up here. So if our plan read that dimension as 70 feet, 7.8 inches, uh, we would know that we were scaled properly. And then if it needed to be say 100 feet even, if that's what the plan called for, we would just type that in like so and click OK. And you'll see now the plan will be scaled accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the quarter inch equals a foot just so we're working um, at the right scale. But that's kind of the approach for scaling an individual page. There are some other features here that we're not gonna cover in the interest of time, such as our rotate buttons and a crop feature. We can also add in a dimension for referencing later on if we'd like. But the important thing to note is in this view, we're gonna be able to scale our plan and then import it into our takeoff area. So for one page, we would use our import to current tab button here located in the bottom right. And that'll bring in this page onto its own tab. And if we had a full set of plans here and we wanted to bring each page in onto its own tab, we would choose the import to new tabs button. And just a quick note there, if we did have an additional page that needed to be scaled to a different scale, like maybe we had some elevations like around here in our plan set that were at a half inch, we could just click the drop down here and scale those elevations accordingly. So we're not tied into the same scale uh, when we're doing our imports. So is that kind of a, a good explanation of how this module will work? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, is there a limit to how many pages we bring in? Like if I need to bring in 30 pages, would I be able to? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, we've tested this import module up to multiple hundreds of pages and it will uh, import those just fine. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure, no problem. So since this is a smaller project, I'm gonna go ahead and just say, let's import to our current tab. And you'll see now our scaled plan has been brought in and we're ready to go. So at this point, we have uh, two different options. Uh, we can either zoom in here and start reading our legend to build out our project items, or we can go ahead and draw our rooms. It's kind of up to you as far as which you prefer with the workflow. Um, I'm happy to show you either. Um, let's do the products first. I would like to see how that works. Okay. Um, so for this job, we have a sheet vinyl, a subway tile for our um, walls. So do you guys do wall tile or do you just do flooring products? Uh, no, we do do walls. I am interested in that. Okay. So I'll go ahead and show you the ceramic uh, wall tile a little bit later. So we'll just go ahead and get started and we'll make a carpet a sheet vinyl and our tile. So to get started here, we're just gonna go over to our project items and we'll click on this plus button here. And you'll see we have our new product pop-up come into play. And since we're working with a project item, we can call this uh, SKU whatever we'd like. So in our case, CAR is what's referenced on the blueprint. So that's no problem. We can just type it in accordingly. So that way, if you were doing like a hospital and there was a sheet vinyl one, two, three, four, and so on. You could just name those accordingly here and then choose your product type. In our case, we'll choose carpet, but you can see uh, most of our typical products are gonna be here, whether it's carpet, vinyl, tile, underlayments, wall base, um, add-on items such as a linear item and so forth. So we've got all of those options there. We'll go ahead and click our type as carpet and we'll click okay. And this is gonna be our main product view here. So this top section where we can enter in the item info and choose our display color and our unit of measure and the trade and so forth, this is gonna remain kind of universally regardless of what type of product we're working with. And in the interest of time, I'm just gonna leave this as a kind of bare bones setup. If you'd like to enter in your vendor manufacturer information, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, one important thing to note, if you like the idea of having product descriptions show up in a legend next to your diagram, I highly recommend putting that information here in the top line as that's what will show up next to your legend or usage legend later on. Okay, so does this top section make sense? Yep, sounds good. Okay, now this middle section here is what's going to change based off of the product types that we're working with. So in our case, since we're working with a traditional carpet, it's going to give us our roll good section here. So if we want this to be just a basic 12 foot uh, carpet, we would leave it as is. 
And the rule length is kind of optional. 150 is our default. If you are working with a specific length, like maybe you're working with a rubber floor where it does come in at say like a 50 foot length, uh, feel free to type that in accordingly and the program will take that into consideration. And if you're working with a patterned good, we do have a repeat and drop section here. So your horizontal and vertical repeats would go in the respective fields. And then the drop area isn't really gonna affect our estimation too much. The horizontal drop and vertical drop fields are going to just affect the visual shift of that pattern. It's not going to really change the, the layout estimating there. So is this section making sense as far as the rule gets? Yeah, so for the horizontal and vertical repeats, that's like the actual pattern we'll see on the carpet. Yeah, absolutely. So if you want to cover a pattern carpet, um, I'm happy to put that information in here. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so let's take maybe um, an 18 by 36 uh, pattern here. So we can go ahead and just enter that in in the repeat fields. And if it's kind of a standard pattern with no shift, we would just leave it as is so we can ignore these drop fields. And then the bottom section here is also going to remain the same regardless of the product type. So we can see we have a pricing info section here. So in our case, we have a sales price or uh, essentially a retail price, what we would be charging the potential customer. So we can enter that in uh, calculated by unit. So maybe this item here is uh, 350 a square yard and maybe we paid uh, 175 a square yard. And if you guys don't do pricing, that's no problem. Uh, a lot of our commercial folks just use this for the uh, diagram and takeoff quantities. And then we can take those numbers and plug them into an Excel proposal. Maybe someone in your sales department might have that role. So is the pricing something you're interested in seeing today? Or do you typically have someone in sales do that? Uh, yeah, we typically have someone in sales. But does this kind of tie into, I think you said, we can export some of this to Excel? Um, yeah, absolutely. So all of the quantities here that we generate uh, will be visible in an Excel format. So you can just copy and paste your information, whether it's by tab, if it's a multi-floor project, or by product, if you want just a high-level summary for like your pre-contract phase. Uh, we have all of that information available in an Excel format with just a click of a button. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. let's just put pricing in this one. I'm kind of curious what that will look like in the worksheet. Okay, sure. And uh, for our roll good here, it won't necessarily come into play, but we do have our sell by option, which will be great for say ceramic to sell by the box or for adhesive, we can sell it by the pail and so forth. So we'll kind of cover that in just a little bit. And then um, lastly here, you'll see we have um, some modules here related to freight price, labor and so on. Um, that's related to our bid template which is a commercial feature we have. It's uh, something we could set up with your Measure Square ID profile. If you'd like to see that, uh, we can discuss it uh, maybe over email or even at the end of the demo here, if that's something you're interested in, I'll take down your information and set that up for you, okay? That's cool, sounds good. Okay, and uh, the last thing here at the bottom of the list is one of the most uh, helpful things we have here on the product side. This is what we call our product add-on section. And this is really cool. It uh, is available across all the different product types. So if you're working with tile, uh, vinyl, this will still be here. And this little green plus will allow us to take uh, what we call an add-on item, such as our pad or other items, whether it's a thin set or a subfloor, uh, a vapor barrier, things like that. And we can take these items and select them on our product menu and then we can attach them via an add-on method. So for example, if we wanna take a pad and attach it to this carpet and have the pad calculated by the net area of the room, we would just select the pad, choose original quantity and say save. And then also for other types of add-ons, we do allow you the option of calculating them uh, by say your product usage as well. So that would be based off of your uh, gross. So essentially original quantity equals net, and product usage equals gross. Okay, so Great. is that making sense as far as how the add-on would work? Yeah, so it's kind of like, um, I guess like you're bundling them together. Yeah, exactly. So when we click the save button here, you'll see that the product is gonna be kind of nested in this product add-on um, spreadsheet. And we can have more than one if we want. So if we were say doing a, um, 
a project where maybe we're tearing out a bunch of old carpet in a convention center or something and then putting in new, we could easily have our new pad and our floor prep in here and then maybe even our tear out and haul away labor charges for the old product as well. So you can have more than one add-on here if you'd like. Cool. So if if I was if we're let's say doing this in our uh, I guess our master database uh, under the product services, does it save it there, or do I have to redo this every time if I want to do these add-ons? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. So it will actually save this add-on relationship to where if you wanted to say take a generic 12-footer with some pad and that tear out and haul away fee and have that nested, say under this carpet folder here in your master database, you would be able to drag that over every time. And then you could just say modify the project item uh, description down here to save some time. Oh, great. That saves a lot of time for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We understand that the, the product creation is oftentimes one of the more tedious and time consuming portions of a commercial project with how many things that are custom. So we try and do as many uh, favors as we can as far as speeding that up for you. Cool. Great. Okay, and uh, just one more thing to cover here. Whenever we're adding on an item to a uh, product, we just need to make sure and hit the Save button down here in the bottom right. And then you'll see now our carpet will show up here with a little plus next to it, showing that our pad is indeed tied to it there like so. Cool. Okay, so that's really all there is to it for making a uh, carpet. And if we had more than one to make, um, let's say this project had several carpets, this little button next to the plus is our duplicate button. And if we click there, this would allow us to make a carpet two, let's say, and we can then just change the display color accordingly. And if there's say a, a no repeat on this guy, we can just zero out that information, but you'll see it'll even keep that pad association. So now I can just click save here in the bottom right and we've made our second carpet in just a couple of seconds. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so that works across ceramic, sheet, vinyl, uh, whatever product type you're working with. So in our case, um, let's go ahead and jump to the next uh, product type here, and we can maybe uh, make a sheet vinyl real quick. So I'll just say SV for sheet vinyl. We'll choose the product type as vinyl here. We'll click OK, and then we'll go ahead and choose a display color. I'll go ahead and make this a, uh, a six-foot good, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Save here. And do you guys do a lot of sheet vinyl work? Uh, yeah, we do. We do um, a lot. Like we'll have a lot of different colors, especially like in similar rooms. If we can kind of co cover something like that, is it possible to? This might be jumping ahead, but to, I don't know, like divide areas in a room so we can have multiple sure. vinyl in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's no problem. So we'll definitely go ahead and cover the multiple products of the same type within the same room in just a little bit. Um, but what we'll do first is I'll go ahead and make some weld rod and show you how we can attach that to the sheet vinyl, because this is really cool. If we go ahead and say weld rod and go to our type, if I choose linear here, I can click OK and I can make this weld rod. And if I set it up as an add-on via this little checkbox here and click save, we can now go into our sheet vinyl. And if I click on this green plus, I can go in, choose my weld rod we just made, and this add-on method will give us some different options since this is a linear product. So I can choose either say a base perimeter, which would be great for like a wall base or so on. But the really nice thing is for a sheet vinyl or even for certain carpet situations, we can calculate this weld rod by our seam length. So as we're moving our seams around later on in the process, that weld rod calculation will be changing in real time for us, giving us an accurate count on that uh, product by the seam length. Okay, that looks great. Uh, I see where you're going with this. Excellent. So yeah, if we had more than one sheet vinyl here, especially now that we've made the uh, the weld rod, the trick here would be to just highlight it blue like before, and we could say, okay, maybe we have four different sheet vinyls, right? So we have SV. We can go in here and say SV2, and we'll go ahead and we'll just put in a different color here, and we'll save that guy, and then we'll go here and do the same thing with SV three and four okay yeah that's exactly what i was curious about 
So yeah, I, absolutely. You know, we understand when it comes to commercial projects, you know, you might be doing a hospital or a school where there could be, you know, seven or eight of these things. And we understand that a lot of times with uh, the pre-contract phase, you're just trying to get through uh, that workload, get your numbers out there and see if you get the job. So you can see if we go in here, um, we have our different weld rods. So right now we kind of have it set up as a universal. So one thing we can do is it might be uh, worth taking this weld rod and duplicating him a few times. So if we did have to do, say, a color match on that guy, we could go in and say, hey, here's our weld rod two, and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be this kind of uh, cornflower blue color as well. So yeah, that exactly. way, that way exactly. we can really go in and get the level of control we're looking for. So now yes. that different colored weld rod will be right here waiting for us and we can calculate that by seam length. So in the interest of time, uh, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna go ahead and, first of all, I'm gonna delete that purple one so we don't double account for that weld rod. We'll just left click to highlight this guy blue and hit the uh, red X, and then I'll save like so. And uh, in the interest of time, is it okay if we just leave the other weld rods the same? Yeah, yeah, I totally understand uh, okay. how this works at this point, so great, I like it. Perfect. Um, so lastly, let's go ahead and talk tile real quick. I'll make our ceramic tile for this project and we'll just choose our product type as tile. We'll choose our uh, display color here and we'll go ahead and leave this calculated by the square foot. In our case, this little subway tile for the walls is gonna be a three by six. So you can see I have a little drop down menu here for my tile sizing. We can of course type in whatever we need here um, I know it's really common these days for even like carpet tiles to come in a metric format. So real quick, I'll just show you if we did have a metric format tile here, we could say type in 25 cm and it'll do the conversion for us. So if we had like a 25 centimeter by one meter kind of plank shape, it'll run that conversion for us no problem. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we know that that's kind of where the industry is headed. So we just want to try and make it as easy on you guys as possible. Um, so one extra thing we definitely want to cover here with the tile is, um, of course, like I was saying before, we can sell this by the box. So maybe, uh, this tile comes say 15 square foot per box. We can check that sell by, make sure box is selected and enter in that quantity. That way we're not going to just get a piece count. We'll have our overall, um, necessary quantity for the tile to get the job done. And then here in the kind of top section of our estimating area for this product detail, we have what we call our calculation method. And so we understand tile can be a little bit finicky to estimate for. So we actually give you four different options here. So uh, waste add-on is just gonna be a set percentage over net. This half reuse will give us an option where depending on the tile positioning within the room, if there's greater than 50% of a tile left, it will try and take that piece and make one cut to place that fraction somewhere else within the room to try and lower our waste. Cut and fit is very similar to half reuse, except it doesn't have the limitation of having to be greater than 50%. And no reuse is essentially, even if you have 90% of a tile left in your given layout, we're gonna assume that you're gonna take the remainder of that tile and kind of go play Frisbee with it. So it's a very conservative approach. Um, <laughs> So typically what we see is a lot of our folks will use a waste add-on where they might do something, say, between 5 and 7% over net, and that's definitely one approach. And another popular one I see would be to use, say, the half reuse. And then the nice thing about that is we can go with not only the half reuse, but if you want to throw, say, 3 or 5% over with that calculation method, we can do that as well by just typing in the additional percent here. Oh, nice. So you can do both. Mm-hmm. So that we understand, you know, the tile, maybe depending on the size of the product and so forth, sometimes different options will benefit you in different ways. So we do give you uh, control over that here. Okay. And real quick, I'm not going to cover this because uh, it'll take a little bit of extra time, but we do have the ability to show an image on the tile itself. So if you are working with like a large format stone or premium tile and you want to show that image, within the room when you're actually looking at your diagrams later, uh, we can just go into set texture and uh, we can set that up. And if that's something you're interested in, uh, we do have a video 
on that on our YouTube channel or our website that will uh, cover that. Great. Okay, so are we feeling like we have a good handle on how we can do the product creation here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, I guess the one other question, I, I know we don't want to sp spend too much time in here, is um, like a, uh, a wall-based kind of product that we might do oh, on printer. Sure. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Let's go ahead and we'll make a, a quick wall base here. So we'll just go ahead and click on the plus button here. And I think this one calls for like a four inch Johnsonite. So I'll just go ahead and type in RB uh, based off of the spec on the blueprint. We'll choose the type drop down. We'll choose wall base. We'll click OK. I'll choose a nice bright contrasting color compared to our flooring products here. And then you can see here on the estimating info section, we can set up our height or width for this product. And four inches is actually the spec on this guy, so we're good to go there. And then if you do want to put in a uh, waste add-on over your net, uh, we could just throw that in right here. Um, so that may or may not be something you're interested in. Uh, just a quick note, with the way our program draws rooms, we are very exacting about the quantity of wall base, um, especially considering that it's removed from both sides of our doors. So I know traditionally in other programs, some folks will not do a waste add-on because they're kind of counting on the excess in those doorways being uh, rolled into the calculation. And in our program, that's kind of a different uh, mindset. So we can either leave it as is, or I can say throw an additional 5% on there just to make sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, that that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's all there is to it for um, the wall base here. So if it's okay with you, uh, we'll go ahead and close out this uh, project items section, and you'll see now here on our left hand side we kind of have our list ready to go and so once our rooms are drawn it'll just be a simple drag and drop approach to take those products and apply them into our rooms so now that we've gone through our importation phase and our product creation phase our next step in the workflow is going to be to trace out our rooms and then we'll go ahead and put in the product okay sounds good all right um so I typically recommend starting off with our draw rectangular room button here and just a single left click will highlight that tool. You'll see that in the toolbar itself, any icon we have selected is going to be highlighted kind of that golden color. That's just a nice way of letting us know that the tool's been activated. If you do need to deactivate a tool for any reason, you can just right click on your mouse. You don't have to go back up to that toolbar. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this button one more time, kind of avoiding the drop down arrows to make sure I'm getting the main tool here. And I'm just going to glide over with my crosshairs and I'm going to zoom in using my scroll wheel. And the approach here for the rectangular rooms is we just line up those crosshairs with the inside corner of the room. We're going to left click, hold down that left mouse button, drag from one corner to the other. Then we're going to let off that left mouse button. And you'll see now we have that room number one traced out. And this gray area here kind of represents our wall thickness, which is adjustable in our system settings if it doesn't seem to be lining up right for us. Okay? Okay, cool. Sounds good. Awesome. So that's really all there is to it for the rectangular rooms. And one of the nice things here is uh, you'll see I'm kind of nudging over while staying zoomed in. That's a cool little trick we can do just by clicking in on our scroll wheel on our mouse and holding down. That way we're not zooming in and out all the time. And I'm going to go ahead and just take my crosshair and line it up with that other inside corner in the neighboring room. And can you see the two bright green lines we have here on the 8 foot 11 and 11 foot wall? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So that's actually the program saying, uh, hey, do you want to snap to that corner point there and use that as a common reference when drawing the neighboring room? So if I have my red dot and those two green lines, that means we're locked in for sharing that corner. So I'm just going to left click, hold down that left mouse button again, and drag over to complete that room. So basically, I'm just going to go around here and draw the perimeter of this project using my rectangular room tool first to kind of get all of the easier shapes out of the way. And you can see that while we're going around here, once we get comfortable with those two green lines indicating the shared corner, we can just line up that red dot. And nice and easy, we can just go around here and trace out these shapes. So in the interest of time, I might draw these offices here as just basic rectangles instead of more complicated shapes. But uh, if you do like to be a bit more of a perfectionist, we can always go in here 
with our regular draw tool that I'll use for some of these more complicated shapes like the waiting area. And you can draw those notches in if you'd like to go that route instead. So you can see I'm just going around here drawing my rectangular rooms like so. And we're in the home stretch here. And we can kind of ignore that riser room. That's a little bit outside of our scope of work. Nothing's really going to go on there. Um, I will go ahead and switch gears here and uh, right click to turn off my draw rectangular room tool and select my draw button here on the uh, to the left by left clicking. And we'll show you how to draw a little bit of a more complicated shape. So the same logic applies as far as tracing the interior corner points. And we're still going to look for those two green lines. But now, instead of dragging from corner to corner, I'm just going to left click at each interior corner point to trace out that shape. And since I have a 4590 drawing triangle selected, I can actually keep those corners nice and clean without having to do any additional work. And uh, you can see here, when I'm about done with my room here, this last wall has kind of a magenta line. And this is a really neat feature that we're going to leverage in just a couple seconds called our autocomplete. And this will allow us to take the fact that we've drawn this wall over here from the neighboring room. And if I right click on my mouse, it will actually finish drawing this room for us while keeping us in the free draw mode. So that way we're kind of leveraging our previous work. That is nice. Excellent. So I'm just going to go around here and kind of use that same free draw approach real quick to trace these rooms out. And you can see if we kind of think things through a little bit with how we're drawing these rooms, we can use that autocomplete to really speed things up for us, you know, saving us as much drawing time as possible. So we'll go ahead and trace these rooms out. You can see that these 45 degree walls are no problem with that drawing triangle. And then I'll go ahead and trace out my reception area here. I'm going to go ahead and make sure to click here at the end point of this pony wall before I close out this shape. It'll just help us a little bit later on when we come back. I'm going to delete these walls so we can properly uh, simulate that pass through where the carpet meets the sheet vinyl. OK? Um. Um, so real quick, before we draw our hallway, I'll just draw your attention to the fact that I've drawn in every room that kind of encases this hallway shape. And that's just to save us as much time as possible so that when I go here to this upper um, doorway, we can just trace out this one little section of the room like so. And I'll zoom out a bit here for effect. And you can see, since we've drawn all those other rooms, the magenta lines are basically willing to draw the rest of this hallway for us. So if I right click, we actually just drew that entire hall in like half a second. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it's a huge time saver. And one of my favorite things about it is for a hallway like this where there's one entry point, uh, that's still a huge time saver. But it actually pays more dividends the more complicated the room shape is. So I'm going to go ahead and actually delete these two little rooms and simulate a more complicated hallway where if we can kind of uh, put on our imagination caps for a second, if this hallway actually had three points of entry and egress, we can use our draw rectangular room tool and we can actually just draw little sacrificial rooms over here on the right hand side. And then we can switch to our free draw mode and just draw that same doorway up here and if we right click it'll draw that hallway with the three entryways and then i can just go in here and delete these little sacrificial rooms by left clicking and then pressing delete on my keyboard and now we've drawn an even more complicated hallway without having to rely on tracing this out so that's just a quick little trick to help you get the most out of that autocomplete feature great great okay so i'm going to go ahead and click undo a few times here just to get our plan back into alignment with what we're looking for like so and i'm actually going to uh, finish drawing this hallway here by zooming in on this little pony wall that we have here and for that i'm going to just left click on the room to highlight it red and this will kind of introduce our room edit menu here on the room modifier section or the shape menu and if i left click here this will give us access to a lot of our really commonly used commands, whether it's drawing an internal wall, uh, merging rooms together, 
creating a phase, all kinds of neat features are here. But in our case, we're going to use our second option here where it says draw wall. So I'll go ahead and left click to choose that option here. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit and hover my cursor over this wall section until it's highlighted green. And I'm just shooting to have my red dot at about the midpoint of this little pony wall. And then we're going to left click to highlight uh, that region. We'll draw our mouse out like so. And I can left click again. And if we needed to turn a corner, maybe we're drawing a partition or like a kiosk area. We can just turn the corner and left click again if needed. But in our case, this is the only uh, section we're worried about. So I'm just going to right click. And you'll see now we have our little pony wall uh, jutting into this room. And then I can right click to turn that feature off. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Awesome. So our next step here is to typically it would be to draw these rooms out. But since they're floating here in the middle of the hallway, I actually find putting some product into the hall to be really helpful to kind of get the next point across. So I'm going to left click to choose my first sheet vinyl and that'll highlight it blue. Then I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag this over towards the hallway. And once the room is highlighted, you just let off that left mouse button and now our product is in the hallway there. And I can right click to turn off my product application mode. Okay, cool. So that's all there is to it for the product application. And you can see we're already giving you your seam layout. And even over here on our project item list, we already have a quantity as well. So to keep things moving right along on the room drawing front, I'm gonna go ahead and go back into our free draw mode. And we're just gonna zoom in here and we will left click at each interior corner point, just like before, to trace these shapes out. And you can see that uh, once we've traced these rooms out, the product is still kind of in that region. So we have one additional operation we need to do when it comes to floating rooms like this. And that is once they're all traced out, we're gonna go ahead and select them by just left clicking on the first one and then holding down control on our keyboard to highlight them all. And we're gonna do what we call punching them out of this hallway. So right now you can see I'm trying to get to this room kind of here, this uh, restroom, but it's almost buried underneath this hallway. So I'm just gonna right click on the room here and send the hallway to the back. And now I can grab this uh, storage closet and I'll left click to highlight it and then hold down control like I was saying before to highlight all of these. And now I can go here to my room edit menu and choose punch out. And now you can see that these rooms are successfully separated from the hallway. So we can put in whatever product type we want here, whether it's ceramic, carpet, uh, what have you. Okay, okay. That, so does that yeah, make that sense? Good. Yeah, it does. Awesome. So now that we have our basic room shapes drawn in, um, we can go ahead and put in any modifiers we might need. So we do have some cabinetry here. Now this is actually for new construction, so these aren't gonna be existing, but if this cabinetry was in place and we wanted to uh, trace out these elevations to make sure our flooring product wasn't gonna go there, we could just go over here to our shape menu and choose the elevation button. And this will use the same exact drawing style as our free draw tool. So I can just hover along my wall until I've lined up with the area we wanna uh, trace. And I'll do a left click to start, a left click here at this corner point, a left click as we return. And that same magenta line that represents our autocomplete feature is still gonna be there waiting for us. So I can just go ahead and right click. And you'll see now we have this little cabinet here drawn into the room. So if I were to take my sheet vinyl and drag that over, you'll see that it's going to avoid placing any flooring product in that area. Okay. Nice. So it just eliminates it. In that exactly. Way. So it does a little bit more than that. It actually draws a little 3D model there to where if we wanted to say put tile on this countertop or even on the faces of this guy as if it were like a shower bench or something, uh, we can actually apply product there. Uh, but in this type of scenario, yes, it's typically meant to just show a removal of flooring product from that area. So I'm going to go ahead and just left click on the remaining rooms where our sheet vinyl will go. So that's one of the nice things. We don't really have to uh, drag it over every time. We can just kind of load up our cursor with that sheet vinyl and then left click the remaining rooms 
to uh, place the product like so. And then when we're ready to switch products, we can just go over here and say highlight our carpet and drag and drop to apply the carpeting uh, where we would like. And then I'll right click to turn that off. And you'll see we have a couple of interesting things going on here with our carpet. So can you see these gray lines okay where it's showing our pattern size? Uh, yeah, I do. I see how we put that in earlier. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then this little peel back effect is interesting. It's actually showing us that our carpet pad is underneath. So that's just a nice little indicator letting us know um, that that product is indeed being estimated for. And since we're in this area, I'm gonna go ahead and right click in the middle of this wall section and just say delete. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side coming from our hallway. And that's just gonna give us that nice pass through look that we're looking for when it comes to creating this area here. And if I left click on my hallway, I can actually grab this handle here and left click and hold down and basically resize my room to get that match line exactly where we want so it looks as professional as possible for that area. Nice, that looks good. Okay, so at this point we basically have our flooring products in place. We do have a little bit more work to do uh, before we're gonna call these rooms done. So I typically like to have the area products in first and then I'll kind of switch gears, go into my linear goods and I'm gonna go ahead and just apply our rubber base where needed, the same drag and drop methodology will apply here. And we'll just go ahead and kind of zip around these rooms like so. I'm gonna skip this restroom since it's gonna be flash coved. Uh, but pretty much all of our other rooms except for the other remaining restrooms will be covered in this approach. And real quick, uh, just so you can see how intelligent the elevation module is, you can see we're not running any wall base behind this guy. Um, so that's just something that's going to give us even more accuracy with our numbers there. Oh, nice. And if we did need to put a linear product around the edges of this guy, uh, we could say go in here to our transition folder. And let's say maybe this orange transition represented, say, some quarter round or base. You'll see that if I highlight the whole cabinet, it's just going to apply that to the two faces of the elevation like so. Great. That's, that's pretty easy. Yeah, we try and make it as simple as possible here. Um, and so really, we only have one other uh, step to cover with our linear product, and that is our kind of nurse's desk area here. Now, we could draw this with an elevation, but that'll do some interesting things to our cut sheet, which has kind of uh, popped up down here in the bottom center, by the way, now that we have some roll goods in our rooms. So we could always trace this out with an elevation if we want. But if we want to keep these swim lanes of vinyl kind of as clean as possible, uh, we have a special tool called the segment tool, where if I left click to highlight this guy, it's going to allow me to use the same drawing mechanism as the free draw tool to essentially trace out a line of my choosing over this flooring product that we can then apply our rubber base to. So I can now grab that rubber base. And when I have this guy highlighted like so, I'll just let off that left mouse button. And now we're estimating for that extra, uh, it looks like maybe 50 feet or so uh, rubber base there. Okay, so that's kind of the logic here is we trace out our rooms, we put in our area and linear products. Uh, we don't wanna forget to flash cove our restrooms here. So I'll show you how to do that. It's nice and easy. We just go ahead and right click on the room. We go here to room edit and we'll choose set self cove. And then we just go in here and say, okay, this guy needs to be flash coved uh, six inches. You'll see we have a little label here next to the room number showing us that that change has taken place. So we can just go in and do the same operation here for the remaining two uh, restrooms like so. And now those rooms will have the appropriate flash cove placed in the uh, room here. And another neat thing, if we have the view option selected, if I left click on this room, you can see we even give you a little visual indicator that the product is going up the wall instead of just being on the interior of the room like so. Nice, that looks nice. Okay, uh, so that's kind of the, uh, the basics here for the flooring products. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the door button here 
so that we can place the doorways and this will do a couple of things for us. It will allow us to notch the product halfway into the doorway and remove the wall base from both sides. And we can even set up a transition if we want. So in our case, most of these doors are gonna be sheet vinyl to sheet vinyl. So I can say, just choose some weld rod. And if I click okay here, you'll see I've kind of got a little doorway next to my cursor and I can just glide around and I can just left click to place. And you'll see that it's gonna place that weld rod and add in the, uh, the door shape there and deduct that wall base for us like so. So we can just glide around here and just real quick, we can left click to place some of these doors. In the interest of time, I'll go ahead and skip some of the sheet vinyl to sheet vinyl doors and I'll go ahead and right click to turn off that feature. We'll go ahead and reselect the door tool and we'll choose maybe a, a default transition. Maybe we'll use this yellow one here to indicate a broad loom to sheet vinyl doorway. And I'll go ahead and place that guy here like so. And you'll see that that's going to notch our product halfway into the door. So that's a nice feature there we have as far as um, getting that product to meet nicely in the doorways there. Nice. Okay, so is this all making sense as far as how we can put in those products and kind of get to the, the next step in our estimating process? Yeah, everything looks pr pretty good. I, I really like the drag and drop of everything. It makes it seem to go pretty smooth. Um, yeah, we try and make it as easy as possible. So um, I appreciate that. Our developers work really hard on the drag and drop approach. Um, so we do have just a couple of extra steps we want to take since you did mention that you do wall tile. I'm actually going to go ahead and make one more product here real quick just so our wall tile count will be as accurate as possible. I'm going to go ahead and make a flash cove labor charge using what we call our linear item tool. And this will be really helpful just so it takes up the appropriate amount of space on our wall to represent that six inch flash cove we did. It's kind of nitpicky, but I want to make sure that that wall tile number is as close as we can get it for you. So I'm just going to make this a linear item and make it a uh, six inch high, or in this case, it'll say width item. And then I'll go ahead and say save here. And then we'll just close this guy out. I'll take my self cove labor charge and we'll drag that in to the three restrooms we have. Uh, just so that when we go to our next step here, where when we look at the walls, it'll be taking up the bottom six inches of that wall space, just like our flash coved material will. Okay? Okay. All right, so our next step here is going to be to work on our walls. And we're going to start off by clicking on the view wall button here in kind of the top center right section. And then I'm going to go ahead and left click on our first restroom. And you can see we kind of have our four elevations here um, numbered accordingly. So this will be wall number one, wall number two, and so on. And this is going to be really helpful. So if we had maybe a different wall stack going on with this wet wall versus the others, we could easily uh, map that out for our installers later on. And this project actually has a pretty uh, basic wall tile setup. So we're really just looking to have a three by six subway tile installed horizontally with a brickwork pattern um, running up the wall to a five foot minimum. So since we already have our six inch flash cove, we're really just looking to kind of split this section into a four foot six inch area that we can then apply our tile to. So to accomplish that, I'm just going to right click on the wall and we'll choose add horizontal wall stack. And I'm not going to hold anything down on my mouse. I'm just kind of gliding around here. And then when that bottom dimension is referencing four foot six. I'm just going to do a single left click. And in our case, we're actually done. So I'm just going to right click. And now we've kind of broken out this region to showcase where that tile is going to go for us. Okay. So um, in the interest of time, the fastest way to do this is going to be to map out this one wall section and then copy and paste that application onto the other walls. So I'm going to go here to my tile pattern library in the bottom left and see if we have a brickwork pattern that will work for us for this offset. So I'm gonna go here to my offset folder and it looks like that's not gonna be the right pattern for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my brick pattern here where it says brick 22. And I'm just gonna left click to highlight that blue and use our same drag and drop approach to drag it towards my wall. And now when I drag this pattern towards the wall, 
you'll see that it's going to give us a preview of the pattern we're going to work with. And in this case, this pattern looks good. And I'm just going to go over here to where it says select product. And I'm going to click on this drop down here and we'll grab our CT that we made before. And I'm just going to choose that as our tile. And then I'm going to click OK here in the bottom right. And now my cursor is kind of loaded for that tile type. So I can just left click there once to place that tile like so. Then I can right click to turn off that application. And we'll go ahead and go back to our product and services view. So at this point, we've got our wall tile there. And we really have uh, one other product to make here. If we want to be thorough, I should probably go in and make a bullnose. So I'll go ahead and choose my type as bullnose. And we'll choose a display color here that kind of complements our tile. And I'll go ahead and make this a three inch high bullnose uh, since we're working with a three by six tile. And then I can just take this bullnose here. And if I drag it over towards the wall, you'll see that I have kind of a bold red line. And if that red line is on the underside of that four foot six measurement, that means our bullnose is going to be the top edge of that four foot six. If you want to cap a four foot six run of tile with a bullnose, you would just want that bold red line to be above. And just like before, I'm going to right click to turn off that product application feature. And you'll see now we have that wall stack exactly what we're looking for in uh, relation to this elevation here. So I know that's kind of a, a simple example, but does that give you an idea of how we can do um, a wall stack there? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I don't need to necessarily see it, but is there the capability to create your own patterns for um, tile? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of great features when it comes to tile specifically. So whether it's custom building your own pattern in our designer, or whether it's going in at the product level and assigning a tile pattern by percentage, um, replacing individual accent tiles, uh, we've got you covered. Basically, the modern tile estimating is one of our specialties. Uh, we understand that as designers get more complicated, that creates an increased workload for you guys. So we're always trying to stay on the cutting edge with that stuff. Perfect. OK. So if we're happy with the way this wall tile looks, um, to save us from having to do that on the remaining uh, wall sections for these restrooms, I'm just going to go ahead and right click on this wall. And I'm going to choose product assignment slash profile. We're going to go ahead and copy this wall profile. And then I'm going to right click on a neighboring wall here, go back into product assignment slash profile. And I'm going to go ahead and say, let's paste that profile to all the walls in this room. And you'll see just like that, this oh, restroom nice. now has all the wall tile done. And the really cool thing is if I choose the remaining uh, restrooms here, I can go in and use that same paste to all walls approach to tile this entire restroom here and this one here as well. So I'll go ahead and paste those uh, profiles accordingly. And just so those numbers are as accurate as we can get, I'll go ahead and drop uh, some doors at least in uh, the remaining two restrooms because that would affect our numbers there. So I'll go ahead and drop in those doorways uh, like so. And you can see all it takes to turn off that view wall mode. We just go uh, right back up there and turn that feature off. So at this point, um, we're actually in the home stretch here. We have all our product applications complete. I'll go ahead and show off our developers hard work uh, real quick here for a second by selecting our room. And I'll show you what we call our view 3D. And you'll see this actually gives us a really neat little model of the restroom here with the wall tile application there. So if we wanted to put this on our bid packet later on, we could actually have this for a reference um, later on when we do our documentation. Nice. That looks really cool. OK, excellent. So um, in the interest of time, of course, there's you know a thousand things we could talk about here. Um, when it comes to moving forward with this exact project, um, let's get into the roll good estimating here. So we already kind of briefly mentioned that we have our cut sheet down here at the bottom center. Um, and you can see we're giving you all kinds of information here, whether it's the number of rolls we're using, our overall quantity, our waste percentage here. And we can go ahead and zoom in to make those numbers a little easier on the eyes there. So um, you can see we've got 17% waste here. Um, in our case, we're running a three inch cut margin. So if I go up here, to my estimate section, we'll kind of get into the nuts and bolts of how we can estimate for our roll goods. So if I click on this 
um, sheet vinyl here and have it displayed. We can start off by maybe just even adjusting our layout direction at the layer or tab level. So if we want to see what our numbers look like running this guy horizontally instead of vertically, I can just go ahead and click on that right pointing arrow like so. And you'll see our waist did go up a little bit, but now we have our horizontal uh, layout to work with. So that's kind of your master direction control. And we could switch to our carpet as well. Uh, this is mainly going to be for the roll goods up here. And if you want to change your layout direction at the room level, you can just go up here to your layout direction tool, left click to highlight it. And then you can just say, choose a reference wall to say, run this roll good vertically and keep the remaining rooms and running in a horizontal direction. And then a right click will turn that off. Great. Okay. So does that make sense as far as how we can change the uh, layout direction there? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to get into this, but um, what do we, can we move the seams around um, in the rooms as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to move seams around, you just hover over the seam, you left click and hold down the left mouse button, and you'll see it's going to kind of walk a block of those seams across the room, and it'll even bring in a new one if needed um, to get your layout right where you need it to be. Nice. That looks pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, uh, pretty simple there. So that's kind of how we can move the seams around within a room. If you do want to add in a T-seam, you can just click on the T-seam button here, and then you can just glide around until you find the position you're looking for. And maybe this area here on the right-hand side is kind of a low traffic spot. We can left-click to place in that T-seam. And then you can see we're still in that mode, so you would just left-click as needed to add those in. And then if you did want to remove a seam from a room, you can just left-click, hold down that left mouse button, and if you drag the seam outside the room, it will uh, remove it like so. Cool. That's uh, cool. I like that. Excellent. So um, one other thing to cover here is we do have a cut margin on our roll goods. Uh, we'll go ahead and check on our sheet vinyl estimating settings by clicking on this gear. And this will give us some pretty important information, such as if the margin is just on the length or width or both for our pieces here. So it looks like we currently have it set up for length and width. So that's just going to give us a little bit of insurance. So if those cuts aren't perfectly straight, we're not going to come up short. So essentially that would mean if we have a 10 foot by 10 foot room and we have a three inch margin on both length and width, it will allow us to have 10 foot three by 10 foot three a product just so we have everything we need to make sure we're going to be good as far as our quantities there. Okay, nice. nice. Okay. So that's kind of the basics here. Um, for the rule goods as far as the layout direction, the moving seams around, adding in T-seams and so forth. Uh, one thing I do want to cover since we did choose a pattern carpet is I'll at least show you how to do a pattern match where we can line up the grids. So you can see right now there's a little bit of a shift in how these guys are lined up. And so what I'm going to do here is I will just left click and hold down control to grab my remaining carpeted rooms. And I'm going to use what we call our pattern position tool. So if I left click on this guy, you'll see this whole little block of rooms is all highlighted. So now I can choose a master reference point for all of these rooms to be laid out against. So maybe it turns out that we want it split, you know, right down the uh, middle here on this uh, pass through. I can just left click right there with my red dot and then right click to turn that feature off. And you'll see just like that, our pattern is going to be lined up across those thresholds, giving us a nice pattern match. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Excellent. And real quick, just so you know, we do have two uh, pattern carpet layout options as far as the, um, when it comes to the match. So as a default, we do have a roundup to pattern size where it will give us a uh, roundup effect where it's going to say, okay, if we have a cut here, it'll round it up till we have it to be divisible by our pattern size. And that's a nice default. It doesn't always necessarily give us what we want. So if you just go into your settings here, deselect that roundup by pattern size, you'll have full control over both the pattern match by width and the pattern match uh, by length. So if you want just a full vertical repeat, in our case, three foot would be what we're looking for. You can just click there, and then if we make these changes and left click outside of the menu, 
you can kind of watch our waste and cut sheet adjust accordingly. So right now it looks like we're looking at about like 67 and a half feet of carpet. If I make that change and left click outside the uh, menu there, it's going to push that to 74 and a half. So it'll give us a little bit more of a realistic control over the quantities for that pattern carpet there. Okay, nice. I, I see how it jumped up like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, real quick, just because I know it comes up all the time with pattern carpet, um, if you left click on your room and we keep our properties open, we do allow you to choose your first cut. So for example, if this D1, this large piece for reception was going to be what we were referencing everything to for our match, I would just left click here to make sure it's highlighted red. And then if I choose the first cut checkbox, you'll see that it's going to actually remove the repeat from that. And that alone was actually good for about three feet off of our uh, roll length here, since that's a full vertical repeat for this guy. So that's a quick little uh, crash course in how we do our pattern carpet there. So is that all making sense to you there, Jim? Yeah, yeah, everything's looking pretty good. Okay, awesome. So at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll add a uh, legend real quick here, just so you can see what that'll look like. And if you want the legend by itself, you would just choose uh, this button here. If you want it with quantity, you would just choose your product usages. So it's up to you. Uh, do you have a preference there? Um, just uh, with usage. I'm kind of curious how that will see how that will look. Okay. So if I choose product usages here, you'll see it's going to give me a little pop up, and I can choose what we want to show. So if we don't want to see maybe our uh, bull nose um, and so forth, maybe we don't want to see the weld rod as far as the color swatches. If we just want to keep it as basic as possible to where it's just our main area goods and our wall base and labor we can kind of deselect the options as we see fit i'll click ok here and you can see i'm not really holding anything down i'm just kind of gliding around this will allow us to place this legend wherever we'd like so if we want it say right here i'll just go ahead and left click and you'll see that that's overlapping our drawing just a little bit so if i want to adjust that i can just go ahead and move that like so, and then left click to place that guy. Nice. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, the run through for this project as far as the room drawing and product application and the roll get estimating. So we'll kind of wrap things up real quick by showing you the worksheet at the product level, and then we can kind of put together a bid packet, okay? That sounds great. Excellent, so we're gonna go ahead and click over to our worksheet tab and you'll see nothing is going to be populated here. Uh, we always want to make sure that we give you guys total control over the numbers so that when you're bringing in your quantities that you'll have exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set up our worksheet here by clicking on the new button in the top left. And you'll see we have different document types. I'll go ahead and stick with proposal. And then the style menu here is a pretty important one. This is where we can choose whether we want to see our worksheet by product, if we want to look at it by area, do a product trade or so forth. So we'll kind of stick with a high level overview by product for now. We want to make sure our check mark is selected. So we're bringing in our estimation data. Then we'll go ahead and click OK here. And you'll see this is going to give us our uh, product quantity, the trade, the unit, our quantity, our waste information, and so forth. And all of these columns are customizable as far as the positioning. So if you want to have your net area all the way on the right hand side, you can drag and drop that guy over. If there's columns that you don't want to see, you can just right click on one and say hide, or you can go in and right click and say select columns. And we give you complete control over what you want to see here. So if I go ahead and say select all and say save for future proposals, It'll just tell the program, hey, I want to see every piece of data we have every single time in the future so that we can get it dialed in exactly like how we're looking for. So if I click OK here, you'll see now we have all of our columns showing um, like so. So we can move these items around. So if you wanted your sheet vinyl to be at the top of the list, you can left click here and click on the top button. So we can really get things dialed in um, exactly how we are expecting things to be. So you were saying your sales team typically would handle your pricing and so forth in an Excel spreadsheet. So if we weren't worried about setting this up as a true proposal, uh, we could actually just get this information dialed in how we want. And then right here in the top center, we have our export to Excel button and we can save this information in an Excel format. We can go ahead and click save. 
then it'll take this entire spreadsheet, throw that into Excel, and we can kind of round out our side of the equation by generating our bid packet. So does that kind of give right. you a quick run through on the worksheet? You feeling comfortable there? Yeah, it's pretty. I like how it basically looks like it's set, like Excel here, and then we can just dump it into Excel ourselves. So that's pretty exactly. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. That's exactly the idea. And on the off chance you do need a PDF of this output, we do have a nice little print button here for you. So if you want a hard copy or a PDF, uh, you can definitely generate that here. But uh, let's go ahead and stick the landing here, and we'll generate a bid packet for this guy. So I'm just going to go back to our takeoff tab. Then I'll go ahead and choose File in the top left. I'll drop down here to our Print button. And this is going to bring up our Print pop-up. And there's an awful lot going on here, but I'll kind of give you the high-level overview. Basically, this section allows us to choose paper size, layout direction, and if we want to choose a PDF printer or, say, a networked plotter. Uh, one quick note, if you do want to go with a PDF, I highly recommend our PDF printer just because we do have all of the common architectural sizes here already plugged in and waiting for you. So if you do want to print a PDF to scale, you won't have any headaches there. So that's kind of the layout here of this column. Our next column to the right will allow us to select what diagrams we want to display. So in our case, we have just the one. If we're working on a multi-floor project, we can go ahead and choose accordingly. And similar deal here with our worksheets. If we want to see that uh, proposal spreadsheet that we generated before, just make sure we have this selected. And then here in our options list, this is kind of our, our master list for what we want to bundle together in this uh, profile. So you can see I have my summary selected, uh, customer and job site info, product usage. You can choose whether or not to show your cut sheet or your room cut list. So these are kind of more of our installer level uh, documents, so maybe we just want to show the uh, regular cut sheet view. Our diagram will make sure the seam diagram is showing. Um, room detail is actually a really cool one. So since we do have some wall tile, if I have this selected along with room detail wall, it'll actually give us a little breakout where it'll show those restrooms with those wall elevations stacked up on the right-hand side um, to give us the exact look we're going for for a reference drawing. So. You may or may not want to include that in the sales packet, but uh, it's there for your installers if you choose. And then if you want to show off and have that 3D view, you can choose accordingly here. And then lastly, our forms button will allow us to grab that proposal. And then here at the bottom of the list, you can see we can say who prepared the documents, the company, your website. You can grab a JPEG of your logo and throw it there if you want. And uh, that's kind of the lay of the land here. And then if we are going to show that uh, wall elevation. If you want a legend to show on those reference drawings, uh, we've got you covered over here with this little drop down as well. And then if you want to show your diagram to scale, we do have your diagram scale over here. And we can say, okay, maybe we want to print this at a quarter inch equals a foot. I'm going to go ahead and just say auto fit. And uh, we'll go ahead and click on the OK button here to generate our PDF preview. And you can see we've got our, I'm going to go ahead and say let's fit this to the width of the screen just so we can see what we're working with here. So we've got our summary, our cut sheets for our different products, our legend here with our quantities. And you can see we've got our seam layout direction showing, our linear products, everything's looking nice and neat there. And then here's those uh, wall elevations I was telling you about with the wall tile. And then you can see, since we still had our restroom selected, we've got that guy showing in a 3D view for a further detailed approach there. And then lastly, we have our proposal page at the product level. So if everything looks good here, we can go to the top left and click on the print, measure square PDF printer, and that'll bundle all of this together into a single PDF file for us. So we can go ahead and attach that to a cover letter or email and send it off. So that's kind of the quick high-level overview of how we can execute a project like this uh, within Measure Square 8. Um, I know you said you had a couple of questions earlier about uh, possibly doing some divider work with multiple products. If you still want to see that, I'm happy to show you. Um, I'll go ahead and save our project here. That's just our friendly little uh, save reminder letting us know that we should save our work so we don't lose anything you know, if something happens to our workstation. So I'll go ahead and save here. 
And uh, did you want to see the divider tool with some different products, Jim? Yeah, yeah. Just just curious how you can like divide up a simple room. I guess for an example would be pretty nice. Okay, sure. So let's take this waiting area for example. Uh, maybe there's just like a a divider here, and maybe we'll even be fancy. Maybe it's just like a little uh, switch back here doing some curves. I know those come up a lot in hospitals and schools. Um, so if we want to break this into two product regions, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the divider tool here. I'll left click to highlight it uh, that golden color. And we're going to go ahead and just glide along the wall, very similar to how we were drawing our elevation earlier. A left click will start us off. And I'm actually going to press the R button on my keyboard, just like I'm typing a single letter R. And you'll see now I can kind of float my cursor around wherever I'd like. And I can use this to help us choose a tangent point on the arc. So I can left click here. And if it was just a single arc, say to this corner point, I could return it like so, or I can say select this region here, left click, and either keep drawing a straight line, or we can press R again to say build out or return on that switchback. So now we kind of have that curved divider going on. And if we want to take our second sheet vinyl, we can left click to highlight that blue, drag it over into that room. And then since we took the time to make our dedicated weld rods, I can even choose which color matched weld rod I want to add to this divider area. So I can just left click on this weld rod too. And if I drag it over onto that curved divider, it'll highlight it turquoise. And I can left click to place it. And we'll even get those nice dashed lines letting us know that that weld rod has been calculated for us. So that's kind of the quick approach to the divider there. And one other thing uh, just to keep in mind is when we make changes like this, if we go into our worksheet, we just want to make sure to hit this reload button here, and that'll give us the new values with our second sheet vinyl and so on, just so our quantities are still going to be good when we go into our file print button. That way we'll get exactly what we're looking for with that new output. So that's kind of the, the quick approach there with the divider. Does that make sense? Yeah, that looks uh, that looks great. That looks actually really easy compared to um, other ways. I've seen some other I've – se I feel like I've seen other softwares that you have to either – draw a bunch of short lines or draw a straight line and change it after, but that seems really simple to trace out. Yeah, uh, we understand that, you know, the devil's kind of in the details with this stuff, and that's always one of the nice things about only doing floor estimating software is, you know, every concern you have, like your day-to-day -day when you sit in front of it for 10 hours, it's our concern too. So that's that's kind of the, the quick overview here on a small commercial project. I appreciate your time. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer him. Otherwise, I want to be respectful of your time. Did you have anything else you needed to know? Uh, last one is you mentioned you guys have uh, you had some videos. Uh, I really like kind of like the self-learning, watch them on my own time. So do you guys have videos that kind of cover this type of stuff? Or how do we? is there somewhere I can look, watch those? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to our YouTube channel and just type in, uh, if you go to YouTube and type in Measure Square, you can find us that way. And for basic stuff, we have a great series that we call Getting Started. And then we also have what we call a special topics series, which might be helpful for you, where I have, say, like a 15 to 20 minute video where I go through an advanced bathroom design, where I'm making shower curbs, putting in accent tiles, doing advanced wall tile stuff. Um, so whether it's that or doing a basketball court with some sports flooring, um, further discussion on the pattern carpet match, free drawing tile shapes, you name it. We pretty much got you covered there. And you can go to YouTube or our Measure Square website and look up the videos that way. And then uh, just so we can kind of make sure we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's here, if you do need any help while you're evaluating your trial, you can always email um, either myself or anyone at the support team by emailing support at measuresquare.com. And just so you know, the commercial product that we covered today it is uh, 179 a month, and it's a subscription, and there's no contracts or uh, startup fees, and that does include uh, support and updates as they come out. Great. Um, and then is there a, uh, I guess my very last question, I swear, is uh, um, a, can I do a, a trial um, as I watch those videos too? Um, yeah, absolutely. So if you go to our website, we actually have a free trial. I think it's like a 15-day or two-week free trial where you can go ahead and uh, download that guy. And if you want to follow along and do this project, I can send you 
the uh, PDF file. And while you're evaluating, if you have any questions, you can reach out via phone or email, and we'll give you the same level of service as if you're already a paying customer. Great. Uh, thank you so much for your time, James. There's a lot of great information. Um, I look forward to uh, talk to you in the future. All right. Thanks a lot, Jim. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too. All right. Thanks.